are the passages from Emily Dickinson to WCW in terms of images that can be sent specifically things that can be seen, heard, smelled, tasted, or touched. Yes. And verbs that are linked in to that. And is a theory that it could be more easily shared than abstract words, such as beauty or something from the romance. Okay, good. Emily? Just, just to get the question clear, he said that all images, poems deal with vocabulary, sort of concrete, of concrete people. Well, he was drawing a line from Dickinson to the images, but you can just take the images. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I guess the objective, the aesthetic object of these images, poems is to recreate as much as possible in words the physical and sensory experience you have in interacting with the physical world. And as such, you tend towards vocabulary, which is concrete rather than abstract and things rather than concepts. And um, I think what Don was suggesting was that from the point of view of the reader, we get a sensory relationship to these words more than we get with an abstract word. That's actually quite an arguable and controversial thing to say, but I want to assume that Don is right for one more second and um, ask anybody else before I turn to Teresa to comment on this further. I mean, like, give an example from an HD poem. Yeah, sure. So I have zeros in front of me, C and I think that um, let's see. The last stanza: Can the spice rose drip such acrid fragrance hardened in a leaf? So you actually have quite a few um, sensory things there. You have dripping, such acrid fragrance, smell, hardened, like touch in a leaf. It's very like you. You can get. A real sense, of tactile, a real tactile sense of what that, what that uh, spice rose. Is there a word in there that looks that sounds like, like what it means? There's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, I mean drip. acrid, definitely. Acrid, acrid, drip, acrid. A drip, drip. I got drip, drip, drip. I know, I but acrid, I'm not so acrid. sure. Acrid sounds harsh. Yeah, it sounds harsh. Sounds harsh. Okay. All right. So. What about this? What could be the counter argument to what he's saying? Um, Teresa, I promise to come back to you, but would you give that mic to Steve McLaughlin? Steve McLaughlin is a guy who thinks a lot about sound poetry. Isn't it possible for a, an abstract word to sound sensory sensory-ishness? It is indeed, and, and uh, among people who study these things, I mean, to think about the first words that a human being says. Uh, it's the ma ma is the is the uh, is the close warm rounded presence in your life and the da da is the, it's over there the da <laughs> it's, the, it's over that's, that's is, German da da and this is and this is not just me um, using this is documented stuff so there is uh, yeah I mean um, you you can trace these things back Word language is not arbitrary that is to say um, you just opened a can of worms <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you can definitely fall down the uh, the rabbit hole once you start thinking that way, because it all becomes interpretation, and there's no necessary, not necessarily a reducible answer. Um, thanks, Steve. 